All right, we are back. <laughs> um, where were we? This is writing the name length, um, destination, swap. Oh, that's the issue. The destination is on top. So I think it should be like this. There shouldn't be a swap here. So maybe that's the issue. Okay, it straight up <laughs> doesn't work. So what am I not getting here? Source in the length, and now we get the dust on top. I don't know. Well, that's true. So I think it has to be a rotation, not a swap. That's my problem. So it's it's like this, and you have to do. It's not swap. It's end wrote. That's the issue. No wrote 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 wrote. Because the length is on the top. Okay, shit doesn't work. So apparently that wasn't. So at this point, you have source, source length, and destination. Um, and C move takes okay. It is swap. It is swap. Swap was the right thing. Because then you get this order, and things are Gucci. Um, Maybe a line has a stupid bug. Let's see. Take the current location, align it, and store that back to the CP. It seems pretty foolproof unless CP is like, where is my definition of here? What is the CP? You know what we're not doing? We're not actually incrementing by the length. And so that's really, okay, that's the issue. The issue is we are not, um, yeah. So we're passing in here, but at this point here, from what I can tell, we haven't act, oh, I see. And that's why there's this whole four byte, I see. Okay, I see exactly what's going on. We're not allotting, we're not allotting um, the space like we're not advancing the when we're doing the C move, we're not advancing the cursor. We're just writing to it. So I think what you want to do here is um actually a word I haven't seen in fourth, but I'm sure it exists, 
but I want something equivalent to a post increment actually, which is often quite useful so that you can do, you know, I, I want to do like this. Um, you know, so a lot takes n, and I want to have the original here, basically, which is going to, uh, you take here, you dupe it, um, and so now you have n here, here, um, And um, then you do minus rote, then you do plus, and you write that to CP. Or I guess rather you just do, no, that, that, that's too, I, I should just use a lot as a subroutine. So um, here, swap. A lot. I think that's all. The original here, I mean, I could just write it out. So we're, gonna, we're gonna do that here. So I'm just gonna do here, swap, A lot. Now the problem with this is it leaves stuff on the stack. Let me just do it here. You want to dupe dupe the length and do, a, do an allotment based on that. Um, but before you do that, you want to record the start where you were before you did the allotment, um, which means you have to use over to get the length. Something like this. I believe, so let's just run this in my head. Get where here is, um, get the length from right below that, a lot by that much, swap in order to get here and length swapped, do this stuff, then do the alignment. Yes. Yeah, that works. All right. Um, create twice. And now we can do this. So we duplicate the top element, we add it, and then we exit. And then we can say get digit twice, you know, and do something like this. Um, and since we now have that th get digit to throttle the loop, I am going to comment that out. Not quite sure what that was about. Um, let me put the throttle back in. 
Oh, right. It's because it ran off the end of the program. We don't have an infinite loop around the program itself. Um, okay. So I'm going to say that works. Um, Now we can define colon, I think. Well, we have to. So this is our bootstrap. We, a lot of these bootstrap things can now be put in here so that the details of how they're defined becomes irrelevant once we do that. So let's define, let's define interpret. And interpret is going to you know, basically do what this thing does. Well, I guess we don't really need to do it that way. Um, okay, colon. So what should colon do? It should go into compilation mode, which I guess right now, did we ever define mode? Okay, we did define mode. Um, I can't remember what those, I can't remember what those are called. Um, I mean, we can define interpret uh, here. It's basically just this. Um, let's interpret the next word. Um, but we want to branch based on the mode. And so um, there's two cases, basically. If the mode is one, which means immediate mode, so I'm going to push the mode. I can't remember if that's what it's called conventionally. Actually, let's do a load. We load the mode. Um, if the mode um, if the mode is non-zero, I'm going to be some kind of sort of skip label thing here. Um, so if the mode is non-zero, then we skip. So if the mode if the mode is zero, then we compile, which means that we do comma exit. Because in this case, we, from, from this line here, we have the code field address on the stack. Uh, and so if we're in compilation mode, then we, um, you know, we use comma just to append it to the current entry. Otherwise, um, this is what this label is going to do. We are going to execute it instead, which is what we were doing before. Um, and I should create, you know, this mode word um, to push the mode and exit. Um, All right, I'm really hitting the pay dirt now, I promise. So so when we do colon, we read the next word, which create is going to do for us. No, actually, that's not true. So we have to do,
create is not an immediate word. So we're going to compile uh, a reference to create so that when colon executes, it's going to do create, it's going to read the next word, set up the dictionary entry for it. Um, and the other thing we have to do is we have to go into compilation mode which means um, putting a one or a, no, a zero into the mode field. Um, oh, and sorry, this has to happen. So we want to do Everything here is quoted, of course. Um, and once we have immediate words, some of the stuff, some of the boilerplate with the commas and whatnot can be fitted out. But here we're bootstrapping. So uh, create a word based on the next word in the input, uh, and then set the mode to zero, which means set it in compilation mode, and then exit. Um, and then we have to create the semicolon, which does, <laughs> this is funny because this is very meta. When it executes, no, I guess it's not that meta. There's like three different levels of indirection here. When semicolon executes, oh, and this needs to be an immediate word. So we need to put in that notion of things being immediate words. I hadn't thought about that. So yeah, we probably need to put that in. Um, it's fine. That was the next step anyway. Let me think about this. So, I mean, basically we append this to the current entry, but you have to append it. It's like, <laughs> God. Uh, I'm thinking about like what is on the stack <laughs> when this thing executes. So we quote the quote. No, I don't think that's right. Quote is an immediate word. Um, I mean, it's easy, like, if this was already defined, you would do... Do this. Uh, 
I think this is why I guess in fourth, there's usually something called square bracket quote, which which maybe is part of this issue for for because the thing you want to do I mean, I guess I want to do the look up here, like for example, if I want to. I do the lookup of Right, right, right. I guess that's, that's what I have to do. Um, uh, this is breaking my brain. So I don't want to use comma. Comma, I guess the problem with comma, now that I think about it, is that it does kind of two separate things. And one of them is related to the input buffer, which is not really the part that I want. Um, no, that's not true. Comma doesn't, so no, comma doesn't read from the input buffer, but. No, that reads from the stack, right, right, right. Yeah, I don't know why I was that. So you're trying to quote comma and then put that there. I guess the the same issue is here in a slightly different form. Um, colon executes I want it to do create and so I append that and it will read the word from the input stream which is correct and then having done that So I look this up at this point, which is a literal, and I compile that. I guess that is really correct. I was just confusing myself there. Let's reset. Okay, one thing it will certainly do is um, set the mode back to one. Um, let's see. Set the mode back to one and exit. But before that, 
yeah, this was the part that was that was throwing me off. I want to emit something. Okay, why did it go into insert mode? All right, Sublime trying to be smart. Um, I want to append exit. Um, so here we have exit on the stack at this point, and I want to I guess I want to push it as a literal. Like this. I want to put this in the second line to indicate it's sort of a different phrase. So I look up exit as it exists at this point. It's going to be a pointer. And then I use the literal thing. I do that, then I append this thing, which is the literal. And then finally, oh God, too many. This is seriously hurting my brain. I shouldn't really. I think this is just fatigue. When semicolon executes, you're going to execute this. One mode store exit. But then we also want to emit code at that point. And to emit code, we use comma. And so I have to quote comma like this, and then emit it to emit a comma. <laughs> um, God, I think that's right. So this looks it up when this is defined, and this pushes that as a literal. So at this point when it's executed, um, the, the code address of exit is on the stack, and so we then emit a comma, and so we quote the comma. But yeah, this is some brain-busting shit. Um, to see if we can step past it and get to the four. Okay, so at least it didn't blow up in the process of compiling. Well, now it does, as I was expected. Um, okay, so right now we have this mode flag, and even though we haven't really tested it, um, it should be respected by this interpret routine. Um, and the other thing we, so, so I mentioned, uh, I mentioned there's immediate mode and compilation mode. In addition, there's also words that are flagged immediate, which always execute immediately, even in compilation mode. And an example of a word like this that needs to be immediate 
is semicolon um, because when you do colon, it puts the system into compilation mode. And so in order to exit it again, you need to actually execute some code. Um, and so by marking semicolon as a uh, immediate word, it means even when we're compiling, it will terminate the compilation basically for that word. So uh, this means we need to expand um, It means we need to expand the uh, the dictionary entry with another field, and I'm just going to take a full word for it. And it's going to say it's zero by default. Um, and let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is just a bit flag. Let's call it immediate. Um, And right now we have these CFA things. Um, I'm going to define one that's like flags. Uh, so I guess this is going to be four, eight, nine. Flags offset is zero. Um, So what is it going to be here? Load the thing on the top of the stack. Um, add the, I guess it's really zero, but it doesn't, don't really care. Let's just pretend because we want to be robust in the face of change in the future. Um, so this is really just adding that offset to the pointer. Um, okay, and um, then we're going to define a word. Um, we, you know, this is conventional. We're going to define a word which is itself immediate. Um, I guess by default the flags are zero. I don't have a good way to do default arguments or anything like that. So um, let's see, this is zero by default. Um, something like this and um, I guess we actually don't really need that for the static stuff Eh, it's fine um, what we do need what we do need is a uh, a way to set the immediate flag and the way that's going to work is we're just going to have a a command called immediate and what it does is it sets the immediate flag um, on the latest entry and so you have the latest entry um, you call flags in order to get the, the, the pointer to the flags you load it you push immediate you and it, and you non-zero it, which I guess is strictly not necessary since in this specific case, but let's just use that as a general thing. 
So take the flags of the latest entry. Oh no, this is not, we want to set it, I'm sorry. Um, you, you load it. Um, then you push this and or it, so you or in the immediate flag. Um, and then you have to store it, store it back. Um, get the latest, get the flags, store, set immediate. Um, I should make sure stuff still works, by the way, because I just changed the header layout, and mo I mean it should just work, but um, can never be sure. So let me test before I do more work. No constant. Push. Really? Oh, I see. What is a no constant name push? I guess in some place I must have defined it. Oh, set. Yeah, that's garbage. No constant or. Flags reference, but never. Okay. Okay, so clearly, <laughs> clearly I screwed something up. Um, oh, right, create has not been updated to accommodate the flags. So before I even do this, you should do comma. So the very first thing is the flags. Yeah, that still doesn't work. Let me just <laughs> be more careful in reading it. So um, at the beginning of the entry, the beginning of the entry pushes zero to correspond to the the header, the the, the, the new word in the header. It is a word-sized entry, so this should work. Um, let me just see how many th things I have to execute. Okay, so it's basically inside this word, which is maybe not surprising. Um, you read the word, you write this to the top, so you're still grabbing here at the right location, which is before you write anything. I'm just going to look here, just make sure it's not, nothing dumb, with some of these offset perhaps. So. Flags offset is zero because it's the very first entry. After that, we have the link. After that, we have the one byte name length. After that, we have the variable length uh, name buffer. So four, eight, nine. Looks good to me, to be honest. 
uh, def entry label name flags. Um, what did I overlook? Perhaps. Um, I'm trying to see if there's something that I overlooked there. Let's see if I. If a plus four plus equals to four add exit um, I really want to get to this point where things are bootstrapped. Um, I think this is really the last thing I need. Hmm. Could be something, no, that can't be it. Um, Let me just make sure the world hasn't totally broken. Because even that isn't working. Even reading the word isn't working. Um, so let me 
Let me put in some more brick points. Okay. This is after the very first thing when it says four and then an address. So it says there's a string of length four, which is word itself. Um, and now if I continue, it says it can't, okay, it says it cannot find a match. So that's find. So find is failing. Um, why is find failing? So it could be that assumptions and find itself are wrong, but it's using all these constants. Um, but I mean, offset zero, offset four for the link, offset eight for the name length, offset nine. Well, like this it looks so straightforward that it's hard for me to believe that this could be the issue. The link is at offset four. Let me set a, I want to set a breakpoint here. Um, um, okay. What? Let's check the command loop. Enter. No. That's right. Enter should always do that. It was me not thinking straight with it. Uh, okay. But I have to recompile. Oh, right. Um, I guess this is the issue with temporarily disabling breakpoints uh, and probably why I did this stuff in the first place.
Okay, we can step past it. I forgot I could just do the B to toggle it. Um, right, okay. So L1, L2. Um, I mean, that's garbage. L1 and L2 are, no, okay, it is four. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Haven't been executed yet. Um, so it's a string of length four. And uh, we're going to load L3 with latest. Let me go to check the condition. This is not zero. And so we load We load the name offset, which is, this is clearly bogus. So T4 at this point is supposed to be the name, of, the length of the string. But the length of the string is not going to be 101 characters. That's insane. Oh, it's because of this. Uh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. Okay. Now something else is breaking. That's what we call progress. So the problem is the pointer was the when I was linking up the new pointer, it was one past or it, you know, it was still pointing to the link field rather than to the top of the, the whole header for the entry. So that's definitely one of the issues, but apparently there's another one, which is fine. Um, the break point. I mean, this is also crazy, right? Uh, after the breakpoint that hits, oh no, sorry, I was looking at the wrong line. String of length four, okay. Um, So 280, this is presumably this uh, pointer to word. Okay, that was a long, long road to get back to more or less the same thing we had, but with a new header field. Um, sometimes low level debugging when you're an idiot is like that. All right. Um, so 
so I think we had the immediate, we made this immediate field um, where we have an immediate word, which um, you know sets for the topmost entry sets it to be immediate. Um, And so with that, we should be able to set this to immediate, which makes, oh, the other thing we have to do before we get to that, um, although let's do that too. Um, Let's also create a word called immediate. Um, which takes a word, takes its flags, pushes the immediate constant. No, lo sorry, loads loads the flag, pushes the immediate constant, and and checks if it's non-zero, and that's it. And then for interpret, there are two things we might do. Um, Um, we might do here. Once we found the word, on the one hand, we check if it's immediate. I guess it's the other way around. Um, you dupe. You do that. Um, you swap and then you ask if, if it's immediate. So now whether it's immediate is on the top. Then you also uh, load the mode to see if it's immediate. And then you OR to check if either of those is true. Um, let's try using interpret at this point. But at this point, really, nothing should be. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's try it. For all I know, this is doing jack shit. Um, Let's remove, let's, let's make it as it was before because we never really tested it. Um, so call interpret, which reads a word, finds its entry, finds its code pointer, checks the current mode. If the mode is one, then we execute otherwise we append and the mode by default is one so now we're using this um, what was the program oh we don't even have something that prints that's a disaster let's get that back here um two twice put digit or four twice put digit Oh, 
for some reason it decided that now is the time to profile. Not sure what button I hit to make that happen. Okay, so it still executes at least. So now let's try putting the immediate stuff back in. Or I guess we were already doing it really, but um, what was I doing? Uh, you dupe, you dupe the dictionary pointer. Um, then you take the code field address. And then you swap to get back the dictionary entry pointer and you ask whether it's immediate. Um, You write it like this. Is immediate um, mode load or so this should still behave the same because we're not nothing is an immediate word yet. Um, but I mean, I guess it's a dumb trick. If I manually if I manually set the mode to zero from this point onward this should not this should not actually execute immediately so th that's definitely the first test case so this should still do stuff like we should still be able to press enter but it shouldn't print okay um god knows what that did Um, this thing sets mode to zero. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let me just make sure that all this stuff, we can get to the end of all of this stuff. Let's see an eight, the end of the rainbow. The answer to that is no. So I don't know quite what caused that. Let's just put in some progress markers here. You get a one. And you get a two. And I guess we don't get a three. It could just be the immediate word thing. But the semicolon is also the weirdest of the words we've defined so far. Okay. So that part worked. So was it really just this? Maybe there just wasn't something called an immediate? Well, let's see here. Yeah, so it's clearly that, whatever that is. Um, so what does immediate do? Grab the latest dictionary pointer. We get its flags. Um, we load the flags. Then we push this immediate flag, we OR it. So now we have the immediate flag set. And then we store it back and we exit. Let me try. I mean, in theory, you should be able to do it even here. Um, oh, so it, 
That's very interesting. Like there's no control flow here. Why would it, unless it's somehow clobbering, um, unless it's somehow clobbering the dictionary entry in the process. So like, let me try this. Like because it would have to be the store, right? Yeah. So it has to be the store of anything. Getting the flags, storing to that address. Um, maybe this flags thing is just busted, but I thought we had already Let's see here. So we get a pointer to the top of to the header, load that. And we add the flags offset, which is really just zero. That's where the flag is. Flags offset. Um put that back on the stack. It's about as simple as it gets. Interesting. Um, and it is, yeah, it's not a byte, it's a full word. And the That's so interesting. It has to be because we're somehow clobbering the word, but that makes no sense to me. Man. Um, I guess one thing I could do to easily debug it is I can do show latest show um, or I guess it's really flags show Just to see what's going on there. So let's see, on top of the stack at this point, it's the latest pointer. And I didn't really want to disable that, I guess. I guess that's correct because um, unless you see the stacks here. So funny or weird. 
What if I make this immediate by default? Which is not going to change much, or shouldn't, with the intended semantics. Um, but maybe this will also trigger the bug a bit more aggressively. No. So that doesn't introduce the bug, even though it's really doing the same thing. Like, um, Wrong text editor. If I do latest uh, immediate put digit, so it says it's not immediate. I mean, this is, so here's what we're basically trying to do. You're trying to do this. Shouldn't that I mean, that flag itself should be. Z um. Okay, so latest. Latest flag. Put digit. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to load it. I think that's probably well. Okay, so it says it is immediate. And oh no, that, that's not right. Okay, this does sorry. This does this this does expect something on the stack. So latest it says it's zero. That is so fucking strange. Latest flags put digit. Does it say for that? So it takes an address and it adds an offset to it, which is really zero. That doesn't really do much. Then you load from it. Um, let me just make sure it's not something really stupid. When I put this back to zero, what happens? It's the same shit. That is so strange. Certainly not what should happen.
Okay, that's even. Okay, that's just because I misspelled. So this is not equal to zero, but I think that's just because it's a random garbage value. As evidenced by the fact that fucked up here. one The command line interface for this shit is really starting to get on my nerves. I really want some better thing with a memory viewer and stuff. Bitty bugger. I guess really what I should do, maybe. Oh yeah, I haven't really done that, that's stupid. So yeah, I should certainly do this. Um, latest flags. Top of the stack, we have that pointer, and now we have um, after loading from that, that value is total garbage 3000 something something. By the time we execute this code, what did we... Oh shit. No, that can't be it, right. That's the word buffer. What about the input buffer? No, that's still not... I, was, I, I wonder if it was a weird thing where the memory was flashing. The fact that the dictionary searches are working means that um, the chaining is good, right? Like, you can look up these different words and they're resolving. Um, so the basic dictionary structure should be fine. So it's just so mysterious that this entry is somehow not getting initialized correctly. So this is the first four bytes 
Um, like the other thing you could try to do is rather than looking at the latest, maybe the latest entry is in a shitty state. That's possible. But um, if I do, for example, um, what is it? Quote, um, oh, that gives me the execution token. So what's a good example? Uh, word, um, word plus find. Um, flags, something like that. <sighs> All right, so we have length one string, and then zero means we didn't. Oh, so we're we're not actually not finding a match. reading some random shit. Or maybe I should, I'm just doing it wrong. So quote is doing word find CFA. Word plus, I mean, you can also do like word create find. Create a six characters. Um, it looks like a lot of this stuff isn't succeeding either. Um, so maybe the problem is just that at the point where word is executed, let me think. So interpret. You know, let's get rid of this stuff here because if this whole thing is busted, this would not work. Um, so God knows if what this has to do with it. That might be uh, something that's been a confounding factor. Okay, so that's the very first word. The stack is empty. And then it's going to, so it finds the word for four.
So it was one four four and then one oh this is different. Okay. Uh. Kind of starting to lose my concentration. This. This is such a simple bug, it has to be, uh, which is why it's driving me crazy. Really need better debugging tools. Um, but I might have to stop the stream now, even though I hate ending on with, with something like this unresolved, especially something so, I think, trivial. Okay, let me be even more dumb with my um let's take something like I don't know let's create a label to that let's load word entry. Um, flags offset. Okay. Load the address, add flags offset. I don't know, we can also just um, right, so it loads a zero.
Actually, let's load from latest. Let's load from latest. garbage this latest really the first oh we did not overlook the first instruction okay um, so this is the latest pointer. Oh god, I know exactly what the problem is. Ah, oh, this is so embarrassing. No, that's not true. Yes, latest is a variable. That's the fucking problem. Oh, I'm so stupid. This is the variable which is a pointer, so you have to load from it again. Right, because latest is a variable, so it pushes the address of the variable, we load from that, but because it's a pointer type variable, I think we're using it correctly here. We're using it correctly here. Where we're not using it correctly is here. This is where we're not using it correctly. We have to load from it. That's the problem. I think that's the problem. Which is why the dictionary lookup started failing because we were clobbering the pointer that is the head of the dictionary chain. So now if I do something like this, gosh. Yeah, so this works fine. Or something is happening in there. Okay. Um, I think is immediate is still fine because is immediate expects a pointer to a dictionary entry and then blah blah blah, right? So that was actually fine. So interpret, I think, was always fine. Um, so duplicate it, code pointer, swap, so we now have is immediate, node load. Or branch. Um, so let's verify the step still executes. Um, and then finally, maybe um, maybe we can actually test this. So first of this immediate word should just work. So this should make this immediate. Um, so let me get rid of this crap. Okay. If I could get this before the stream ends, I'd feel much happier. Give me a three. Yay, I got a three. So at least immediate executed, presumably set the flag here. Um, and now let's try to define eight as 4, 4 plus, and then do 8 hit, hit digit. Um, and I mean, this, this is new untested code, but um, let's give it a try. Yes, it printed an 8. Incredible. Um, can't believe that worked.
so the the point now is um try so normally everything executes out of this buffer immediately but when it sees this colon um, aside from creating the new entry it puts it into compilation mode and from that point on these things are not executed immediately and, and in particular when it sees the put digit I guess that's really what I want to emphasize um, and I'll do that by having a, uh, a put digit one after so we shouldn't see a put digit 8 before the put digit 1. In fact, there should be no put digit 8 at all because it's all that stuff is being compiled. But we should do, see the put digit 1. So let's, um, let's see if that's the case. may not be. Okay, it was. Um, and now if I do 8, you know, if I do something like this, it should invoke this thing we just defined with our new immediate word shorthands. Yay! Ah, thank heavens I fixed that stupid indirection bug. This is one of these things that uh, only happens when you don't have types in your language. Um, but anyway, this is a milestone because now we can define everything we were doing with this nice syntax, standard fourth syntax. And we can define our own immediate words because what we did here was define an immediate word, but we had to do it manually using create. But now we can do it. Um, oh, and in fact, let me, as the coup de gras, let me show you how to define control flow structures. Um, I'm not going to do the. Actually, let me take out the single step there because this should model it automatically. Okay. So this the, the, this did one iteration, but didn't do the second iteration. I probably just had a bug there, but we'll see what it is. Um, so the basic idea behind this, and I may have screwed it up. Um, is begin is an immediate word, so it executes immediately, which in this case, since it's executing at top level, actually, you, you can't execute this at top level, never mind. Um, so let's put this into a, its own definition. I, that's the, That was the problem. Um, because of how this stuff works. Um, so let's make this just definition like this. Straight up doesn't work. Um, what's supposed to happen is that these are immediate words, and I guess we haven't really actually. Now that I think about it, we haven't tested immediate 
working words except for semicolon. So let me uh, let me do one of those. Let me um, just do something that prints prints a one. Um, but I'm going to these are also too classic. Um, two classic words. This one here goes into immediate mode temporarily. So Technically, this doesn't really need to be immediate mode because this is supposed to be executed in real. Um, but yeah, store um, store one into mode, store zero into modes, and these are really just setting those to mode flags. Uh, but the way you can use them, first let me just check out invert chip. Um, available prints of one. Um, if I do, let's say this prints a four. Let's let's print a zero after um, just a bracket, just so we can see when different things execute. So zero four one, right? Zero is one is the outer step, and then four is inside. Um, so four does not get printed from four. But suppose we do. Suppose I do this. There could be a bug. But the idea is that um, even though we're in compilation mode when we're compiling this word, when you see the open bracket, it goes into immediate mode and it's actually going to execute this as compile time rather than just compiling references to these words into the word that we're defining. Then when we do this, we go back to compilation mode. Um, so let me print two here just so we can see sort of the difference. You can see it goes two here when this is actually compiled, then zero, then four, because we call it and we compile it, you know, call it multiple times. Um, so yeah, this, this is the, the kind of crazy stuff you can do very trivially with fourth, which makes it magical. Um, so, so where are we at? Oh yeah, begin. There, there was the begin end stuff that wasn't working as expected. Um, right, the idea behind those words, uh, but anyway, so this confirms that immediate mode works um, for not just for some random case, but in general. Um, so let's move this definition. The thing I was trying to do was, what was it? Begin, begin one put digit. Um, so I'm just going to print a, a crap load of put digits in an infinite loop. Um, and the way these are supposed to work is at compile time, this is so this is an immediate word, which means when you when this is encountered at compile time, this will immediately execute that code. What it's going to do is it's going to come to push the the code pointer at this point on the stack. So the location, basically like storing off where this is, is going to be on the stack. Then again, which is also an immediate word. Is going to do an unconditional jump back to where it started, but we have to emit code to do that, right? Um, again, we have to emit code. Oh, I guess jump maybe not even. No, we do have. We do have something called jump. I couldn't remember if it had a different name in the dictionary. Um, so. Um, we, we push the address of jump on the stack and, and emit that into the stream. Um, and then we assume from begin that the target is on the stack from previously, you know, at compile time. Um, and so we should just be able to do another comma to put that in the stream after the jump. And so this will basically be the equivalent of emitting this sort of thing where, you know, uh, the begin will basically make note of where we were when the begin executed, and then the again will emit this jump instruction or jump jump word 
with the off-brand uh, pop from the stack uh, that was recorded from earlier. And so assuming this works, that's what um, what we should be seeing. So let's try that. So this, if this works, and before it was failing, or some similar thing was failing, so this may not work, but this should just print infinitely, just print a crap load of ones. Um, yeah, so this is not working. Um, by the way, one thing you can do is we call this break, which is really what it is. Um, <laughs> all right so begin i really want to finish this we're getting there um let's break just to see what's going on with the stack at this point. Um, I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to rely on these. So set that breakpoint. Um, so three five, you know, that looks reasonable to me. Um, let me see what the state of the stack is at this point. Something weird could be going on. Um, boom, boom, boom. So this should be here, top of the stack. Um, Has other stuff changed? Yeah. So the program counter, which I think is 27. The program counter has advanced. Um, but the top of the stack is still that one. Um, when you said more breakpoints. Um, oh, interesting. So this really hangs at this point before it even gets. So how many breakpoints is that? That was one. So there's one for the here. Um, and then it hit this opening one. Really feels like it's not finding that jump instruction, but that makes no sense because it's in the dictionary. Breakpoint one, breakpoint two. That's interesting. It looks like it's specifically, there's something about jump. I mean, the weird thing is we can actually define our own jump. Let's call it go to just because why not? Um, read from the stack, um, dereference, put back. Oh, 
does that again. Oh, I know what the, I think I know what the problem is. It's because we're doing we're doing colon in an immediate word. Um, and so it's not executing. It's trying to read from the input stream at a point where the input stream has been exhausted. I see. So this is, I guess, where you need this thing, which is a fourth. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to define it. The idea behind this, like I know of its function and existence, but I haven't defined it before. It's basically going to, um, so colon itself is actually not an immediate word, but this thing is. And so it's going to read when this thing is executed at compile time. It's going to read the word and then um, it's a whole chicken and egg thing here that's always interesting. Um, Probably the easiest thing to do maybe the easiest thing to do So you read this at immediate time, and then you want to um, so you read this. You read the word at compile time. I mean, I guess the other question is, could we just make immediate? Could we just make, I, I know fourth doesn't do this normally, but I think it would be fine. Or maybe it wouldn't be, but let's just do it for now. Um, I think we could just make this be an immediate word and flip, flip the two meanings conventionally, at least in our current code. Um, and I'm sure I'll figure out later why uh, that's not a good idea. Um, but it seems seems like it should be okay. That's forward immediate. All right, so this should be immediate here. Unexpected tokens and expression. Okay, we really screwed something up. Oh, here we go. Okay, it printed one, one. Uh, but maybe that was another statement.
Minecraft. Let's break there. And then break there. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so that's two things on the stack. Again, Um, let's set my brick blocks. Okay, so it popped the top thing, which was green, should be the target, and then. No, I see the problem with making it immediate because now it doesn't exist uh, at the right time. I think what I can do um Um, this is not the right permanent solution, but um, Let me so this should be an immediate word, which does the lookup at compile time of the word, then pushes on the stack. Um, so I want to have a hard-coded version of this from outside, which is the address of this. So I push this, and then I push this thing. So this basically encodes the word as a literal um, Hard coded, uh, and then this should be basically, you know, let me just hard code it in the assembler um, for now. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to just 
Well, let's see. So I'm just, <laughs> it's going to push, push. Um, so it's going to be in zone operand, which is kind of funny. Um, This will read the word. Code that as literal. And so for this, I think we want to do that. Let's see, this is an immediate word, and when executed, for example here, it's going to read the next word, which is like jump, push that on the top of the stack. Um, but first I emit the execution token for this literal push thing. And then afterwards, I emit, no, that's not correct. I need to do word, sign, CFA. No, that's not it. I mean, you, quote push makes no sense to me. It reads this, compile time, finds the entry, gets this, and compiles it. No, just does this. I'm losing the plot a little bit. Just a little bit. So the word has length four, and this is where it lives. Find CFA. Um. Oh yeah, I guess I No no, I think I see why I have to do the push. This is a definition of one immediate word that calls another. So when this definition is happening, it goes up here. It it parses that word, puts whatever in the buffer, um, does the dictionary lookup, does the cookware lookup. But this is the compile time stack at the time when another immediate word is being compiled. That's what was confusing me. Um, and so I have to treat this as a macro. I see. So that's what I, why I want to do. So that does make sense. Um,
since comma expects something on the stack when this thing executes, I have to emit the sequence to, to, to do that. And so that's why I do this. But I think that's what I was trying before and it didn't work either. Yay! Okay. Um, that was, I think, the coup de gras for reals. I think we're done for today because now I'm busted. I just for brute forced my way through some of the, the last few bugs. This is where your brain starts to hurt. It's probably even, almost impossible for you to follow along if you haven't seen this before, given how hard it is for me to follow, even though I'm coming to think about it because I have to get into work. But anyway, yes, this now works, and it is glorious. So I'm too tired to explain in detail why you need this. You need both. Like, uh, quote is not an immediate word. It, it, you know, it will read a word from the input buffer when it executes, and it's not an immediate word. This thing is an immediate word, and you need to use it when defining other immediate words like this in order to basically compile in a reference. Anyway, but this is the right thing. That's the bottom line. But you can see really all this is, is this part here is exactly what comma normally does. And in fact, I think I could, maybe I could just do this. No, because... No, actually, that wouldn't work because it's not an immediate word. That works too, right? No. So I shouldn't do that. Wait, it was working before. What did I change? Oh. So I should call it. That works, yeah. Ugh, so confusing. So anyway, an immediate word that calls the non-immediate quote, and then that is on the stack at compile time. And then I synthesize essentially a push of the literal that corresponds to the thing we we resolved with quote. So yeah. <clears throat> um let me do a few other things. Oh god, let me do if as well, since we did infinite loops here. Um, the other stuff is pretty easy. This is getting those details right and debugging them is the hard part. So anyway, um, let's do ifs. Um, let's do ifs. So if is an immediate word as well. Um, there's two. There's two words. There's if and then. Um, if is going to synthesize code to Um, I think we call it branch, right? Um, let me define minus branch, which is just not branch. Um, and then here I'm going to compile the not branch um, and emit that. And then I'm going to put on the stack like a marker, just like we did here. But here it's in order to back patch because we don't know where we're going to jump to yet. We have to skip forward if the condition is false, but we don't know where to yet. And so we put in a zero as the branch target, but it's just a temp. But we store the location of this on the stack so that we can backpatch it. Um, so we emit a branch, a negative branch, um, with a target that is yet unknown. We just put in zero, and then we remember where that is. Uh, and then when we get to then, we don't have to emit any additional code, but now on top of the stack is the thing we have to backpatch. And so if we type here, this is now the current location, and we have to, let's see, we probably have to swap it, right? Because the destination is the thing that was there before. So 
think it's like this. Um, and now, again, we have to we have to do we have to use these within word uh, in compilation mode within word definition. So I'm going to create another one, and um, I'm going to call it get digit. And I'm just going to say get digit if so if it's one thing then it skips so um, and we'll do an infinite loop now that we have these loop macros um, um, and so we do the get digit and if it's non-zero then we print one and we're not going to print anything otherwise basically Chances of this working first time maybe not the best. Um, let me just make sure it compiles before we okay, it seems to compile. Um, get digit we do the if. So skip skip if the thing on top of the stack is not zero. Um, and emit that. That emits the brand um, base construction. And push this location here. And push in the dummy value. Um, and then when we get to here, we push the new location on the stack. And so at this point, we have we have where we want to direct the branch to, which is the data and the address part. Is below it from the if, and so we swap and we do the right. Mm, this seems right to me, um, but clearly it isn't working. Let me put in some bricks. So this should record that. And we do. as well. Okay, so that's the first one. Why are there two things on the stack? Oh, that's true. There's two things on the stack because there's both this location. Right, so you can see the top entry here, 44, is a little bit bigger. For Well, it's right after this one. It's because this entry here is the loop header for the infinite loop where begin was. And so that's actually right. And then all right, the next break is at the beginning of then. So the same thing should be on the stack. And that is the case. Um, then I press here. So now we have more entries. Oh, here, swap, break. So, right. So the current location is 56. The thing we want to back, back patch is 54. And so if I do the final, I guess I... Didn't really get that far. Um, hmm. 
do some more bricks just to make sure that the stack at all the stages is kind of what I expect it to be. I could have stopped before, but <laughs> I started a new piece. I really want to end it. Um, all right, so this is the thing we want to back patch. is before we do anything when we hit the then. Okay. So this is right after the swap. So now the thing we want to back patch is on top of the stack. And the thing we want to back patch it with is right below it. And then the next one, yeah, those are popped. I mean, honestly, that seems correct. I wonder if the issue is just this somehow. Oh, it is. God, yeah, you can't do that. That's so stupid of me. Um, there's two ways you can do it, but let's do it one way here, which is um, like this. The reason you can't do it is that it's going to, the return stack is going to point in the wrong location. Um, okay, so it's not crashing, but maybe not doing what we were hoping when we took up these bricks. Um, okay, so let's always put in a zero for each iteration just so we can see that it's actually looping. Um, Never, it's never taking the branch seemingly. I mean, <laughs> let's put it this way. I could also just invert the meaning. Um, doesn't really change. Like I'm just assuming it's somehow related to that because I just want to get the conditional logic to, to, to get evidence that that's working correctly. Yeah, okay, that's working. That, that was something else. So do, do you see when I type a zero, you get a one? Otherwise, I get a zero. And actually, I can just cut this out. Yeah, okay. That was working. So this was just other other stuff that wasn't... Uh, behaving as expected. Anyways, that's it for sure for today. Um, Oh, actually, I know the problem. L let me let me do it with the positive sense. Um, so this should invert the logic. No. Oh, right. I have to omit it.
so that works. And you could even do something like this, um, duplicate it, uh, duplicate it to test, test whether it's non-zero. And then, you know, if it's non-zero, then add one or something like that. So you can see I type two, I get three. I type four, I get five. But if I type zero, I don't get anything. Anyway. Okay, for sure, this is too much fun to play around with, despite the uh, brain-breaking bugs. But, um, yeah, I mean, just look at this. L look, I mean, of course, it's pretty obscure until you understand what's going on, but isn't it pretty crazy that you, that you can define uh, fairly reasonable control flow primitives, sort of with, I mean, basically kind of macros, which are immediate words, um, on top of this very simple simple in the sense of not being user friendly necessarily but simple in the sense of having a few moving parts uh, very little hard coded machinery that you can define this sort of stuff um, and you could go on and on you could do fancier loop structures counted loops um, you know all this other stuff so yeah this is definitely uh, <laughs> definitely it for today i'm exhausted but pretty damn happy with how far we got this is pretty much where i wanted to end up it just took a little bit longer than expected so uh, thanks for hanging out. Have a good weekend, and I'll see everyone next week. I plan to do either the first stream next week or the one after that, but certainly early next week uh, to do the sort of more structured how to write assembly code for C programmers tutorial. And so uh, stay tuned for that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, hopefully this is pretty cool stuff. I mean, I, I find this stuff endlessly fascinating with Forth, even though as a programming language it might not be the most user friendly but you can actually get used to especially once you have better debugging tools to see what's going on when things go awry um, it's, it's a fairly reasonable development environment it's interactive and whatnot so uh, hope that was interesting i'll see everyone next week and uh, stay tuned for the, the much promised assembly writing tutorial <laughs>